Media Asia uh, is one of the few companies, I'd say, that sort of embraced, you know, the state-of-the-art special effects. I remember when I was doing these sorts of interviews with Jackie and with, with Chow and with John Wu back in the early part of the 90s, there was this big discussion underway about how far Hong Kong uh, mm. films could go in the direction of special effects without losing their special character. Mm. The films that you're going to be doing with Media Asia, will they be embracing sort of the state of the art effects or will they be more of the, in the area of stunt work or some combination of the two? Um, I think probably with the touch, we are not steering that way of special effects. I think Media Asia has done great steps into going that way because, you know, the Hong Kong film industry needs to expand. You know, Asian films need to go on to a different route where, yes, we have great martial artists like Jackie Chan, Sammo, you know, Yuma Ping, all that. Um, there's only so much you can do physically. I think there's nothing wrong when you are given a helping hand, mm -hmm. you know, it's part of the involvement of filmmaking. Uh, with the touch, we would try to keep it as real as possible because, you know, with the acrobats, you know, with the, the flying around and things like that, we can do it physically. We do not need the special effects. Be it a point that we do need it, I'm not ashamed to say, yes, please, do it for me. <laughs> I would be very happy to do that. But another project that we are pursuing after the touch Yes, we would be going more into special effects. I think we have to give the audience more to look at. It's how do you balance the drama and the special effects? Is it all just about that? Yes, then it would become boring. If it's all about action and no, not drama driven, yes, it would be very, very boring. Mm -hmm. You know, it's about how you get your audience seated there and driven by the drama and attracted by this uh, special effects or action that's going on. So you're saying as, as long as it's anchored to story, nothing should be forbidden right. from the, yeah. I, I guess I'd have to agree with that. My, my other question <laughs> is... Uh, Your absolute last my question. My absolute last question. I'd love to stay here with you forever, of course, Michelle. <laughs> Um, you lie so well. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, uh, the, the speech that Thomas made last night, Thomas... Uh, his politically uh, correct speech. His politically <laughs> correct speech. Uh, the, the head of, of Media Asia at the uh, party to announce your, your deal last night. Um, I, ha I was handed a copy of that speech before the speech was given. And there was a key phrase in the copy that I had that was not said last night. Where Thomas said, when Thomas was making his speech, he said that... Uh, he had looked forward to bringing the creme de la creme of Hong Kong uh, actors back home. Mm -hmm. In the copy that I got, in the original version that, that must have been written, uh, it said the prodigal sons and daughters <laughs> of Hong Kong. You don't know how much stick I gave Mr. Thomas Chung for that. <laughs> so you saw the speech in advance and then... Yes, I did. I mean, um, I, I, the good thing, why am I working with Thomas Chung of Media Asia? The good thing is we have a very honest and open relationship what are you going to do? What am I going to do? Let's just have it out in the open. Yes, he showed me what he was going to say. And that was probably wise, because mm -hmm. had I heard that on stage, he probably would not be alive. <laughs> <laughs> now, why, why did that phrase bother you so much? I, well, I said the same thing to him. Did you look up in the dictionary exactly what, you, what that word connotates? You know, mm -hmm. it's like you're saying that these prodigal daughters or sons are, are, are you know, people who has left the family with their family fortune, squandered it all away and come crawling back with their tails between their, <laughs> their, their legs, you know, and begging you, for forgiveness. You have a deeper understanding of the Bible than I do, obviously. Right. I, I didn't read quite that much into it. <laughs> I mean, in a sense, it, it does raise an interesting question of what the impact has been at home of so many of the prominent people coming and putting a lot of their creative energies into another place. Right. In fact, it, that was one of the first questions that, you know, when we first met and we had our general meetings and getting to know each other, and he had said, you know, all of you have deserted Hong Kong, basically. You know, why don't you all come back and do it? And I said, when, we have not deserted Hong Kong in that way because Hong Kong is always going to be our home. You know, we have family there, we have friends there, and we, want, we came out from this industry. Why would we just leave it behind? Mm -hmm. um, but what is it in the Hong Kong industry that brings, gives us the challenge to be working there? I think as an artist, you work where, it's like finding the oasis, where there is good quality films being made. If at this moment it was Europe, and we were asked to go over there to do it, as an artist, would you say no? No, because it expands your horizon, it you know, gives you further development. And I said to him, if there was a project that I believe that you guys were serious in putting the time and quality that it deserves, like I said in my speech last night, when you compare filmmaking and women, 
it needs the love, respect, and attention, or else it will turn around and kick you in the ass. <laughs> um, and basically that. So he says, well, all right, if we come up with that, are you going to put your money where your mouth is, or are you going to come to... And I said, yes. And obviously he has done that, and we are now working on a bigger development from just going back and doing acting, you know, for Hong Kong. I truly believe there is so, there's so much talent over there, and they have not been given the opportunity. But I can't do it on my own. No one can do it on, the, on their own. It is a collective effort, you know. I'm sure there are so many um, Hong Kong film directors who have come out here, but if they were given the opportunity, and if they were, you know, if I were to go up to Kirk Wong, Peter Chan, or, you know, any of them who have come out here, and said to them, we have a budget that is going to satisfy you as a director to make sure that you will be able to give the qu kind of quality films that we want to do, mm -hmm. I am sure they will be attracted. At the moment, if you are to say to them, come back, you know, I'm not sure whether you're going to get paid, we haven't really got a script going, why should they? Give them a good reason. Give them, give them a reason to come home. Right. Mm -hmm. you know, I don't think they have strayed away. I don't think any of us have strayed away. But we need to, you know, to work together and make sure that there are more things happening. Excellent. Okay, uh, that was your last question. That, I know. I, 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 got, I just thought of another one, but I'm just not going to subject you to it because I'm, I'm going to be a man of my word. All right. But it's wow. wonderful back to you, Michelle. And I've got to say that if, uh, if your relationship with Thomas were the model for the way that people in uh, Hollywood dealt with each other, that sort of frankness. That's something Hollywood can learn from Hong Kong, among the other oh. things it learned over the course of the 90s. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, good to see you again. And good good luck, to see okay? you again.